Hello, everyone. I'm so thankful to be able to talk about the Book of Acts. The Book of Acts, when you first read the Book of Bible, it's, it's hard to read. But when you are into it, when you go into the Book of Acts, you won't feel like you're in Korea. You feel like you're in, you're in Israel where, the, where they're full of Holy Spirit. And also in your heart, you wouldn't be able to stay calm when you have the Book of Acts in your heart. You would like to shout out and preach the Word of God. So I liked the Book of Acts. And whenever I, I was going through difficulties and pains, as I, as, I, as I read the Book of Acts, God led me many times. So this time around, I'm so thankful to be able to talk about this Book of Acts with you. So once we are done with this uh, lectures on Book of Acts, you may all feel like you are have become you have become an apostle. You may all feel like that, and not only in theory but in reality. Just like the works revealed uh, through the disciples of Jesus, you may all run forward uh, through the gospel. You may also bear fruit in your spiritual life, and above, moreover, you may also be persecuted. You may also go through pains and difficulties, but you'll be able to experience the work of God. I'm, I'm so thankful to think about all that. The Bible is different from other books because I used to like novels, and I read many many novels. And because I, I can't remember it all because it's been a while, I read a Crime and Punishment written by Doyevsky. There, there's a main character whose name was Raskolnikov. He kills, he kills an old lady and he was being chased by a detective. And this is what happened in uh, St. Petersburg in Russia. And when I went to St. Petersburg, I actually looked for the place. And like the main character was being chased by the detective, I felt as though I was the one who was being chased by the detective. When you read the novel, it includes many emotions. Even if you look at the same thing, if you add emotion into it, it may look more sad, it may look more joyful, so it looks different. But because Bible expresses is the reality as it is, the Bible is different from other books because Bible does not include any emotions to it. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, there is no emotion. If you want to talk about the emotions of it, it must be very touching and overwhelming when Jesus resurrected. It must be joyful when he resurrected. And also when Dorka revived, lived again, resurrected, and also when there was a storm, there are all these stories in the Bible. But because in order to express the reality, the truth as it is, Bible did not add any true any emotion into it. You know, because when you add your emotion into what it may, you know, it may exaggerate what what it, what it actually is. So he extracted all the emotions out of it. So, when we read certain books, when there is emotion, when you see, when you feel sympathy, that's when you feel interested. When you, that's when you feel excited, and uh, when, that's when you feel fun. But because Bible omitted all the emotions out of the Bible, sometimes when you read the Bible, it seems boring. Sometimes, although it's not as it's not that funny or interesting. But as we read the work of God in the Bible, but when you get to know, to get to discover the love of Jesus, more than any other books in the in the world, this Bible will renew our heart, and over, our heart will be filled up with joy through the Bible. And before the Book of Acts was difficult difficult for me to read, but now when I read the Bible, it was difficult for me to read the Bible, read the Book of Acts because whenever I read it, I felt like running outside and shouting and preaching the gospel. So it was not like a, like it was not about the emotion, but God gave me hope, God gave me grace, and I was very thankful about all that. And as I was reading through the Book of Acts, I was very grateful before God because. Uh, here, the book of Acts begins begins by saying, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. The author of this book of Acts, they are not written actually author, but they are writers because they just write down what they are told. 
you know, in other books, when you read it, you may feel interested, you may feel, you know, very, very funny or good. Because here, the book of Acts talks about how the Holy Spirit works on us. If we just read it simply, when you, read, when you come to a certain part, you may, feel like you, want, you may also feel like you want to shout out and preach the gospel to people. So in every corner of this book of Acts, you can find out those hearts. If you just read it simply and recklessly, you may not feel the heart. But when you read it through, when you read it thoroughly, when you come to meet the heart, you wouldn't be able to stay calm, but you would like to you know, shout out and witness and preach this gospel that you met in the Bible. And that is really amazing. I don't know how, how I can describe that in words. So when you see the book of Acts, it begins by saying, Theophilius. So Luke, he was, a, he was a doctor. So Luke, he was, who was a doctor? He wrote two books in the Bible. That is a book, book of Luke and also a book of Acts. In book of Acts, there it begins by Theophilius. But in the book of Luke, there it begins in the book of Luke. Book of Luke there also it begins by saying uh, Luke. Theophilius too. But here in the book of Luke, he, he, he uses respectful word when he describes Theophilius. So when Luke was writing the book of Acts, it was a letter written by, it was the letter, letter that he wrote to Theophilius. When in the book of, when he was writing the book of Luke, he used respectful words to Theophilius. But in the book of Acts, when he was reading, when he was seeing how Jesus died and resurrected, and meanwhile, Theophilus received salvation. And so in the book of Acts, Theophilus he did not use respectful words anymore, but he called Theophilus as an ordinary person. So that's the difference that we can see here. So I used to talk about uh, when my father received salvation, before my father receiving salvation, after my father receiving salvation, there was a big difference. You know, after my salvation, before his death, we we, invite, we we brought him to our house, and he was with us in Tegu, and because his state was a little urgent, so we brought him back to his hometown by ambulance, and the following morning when he woke up, he woke up from his sleep, and he told me, uh, you know, Oksu, Unsuk's father, you know, last night when I was coming here by, you know, ambulance, I felt so, you know, calm and peaceful. So I have this thankful heart to God. So when I heard that from him, I was so surprised because he never talked like that before. But he was telling me that he was thankful to God. He said, I don't know, I don't know hymns well, so can you please hymn, sing hymns for me? So as we're singing hymns, we shed tears. The father that we met, we met then was different from the father we met today. So in, in one day after receiving salvation, it totally changed. After having breakfast, our father, he was born in Sunsan, and he spent all his life there, and he was going, was going to pass away there. And he had many friends that were living there. After having, after having breakfast, he said, Oh, please call me who and who. Please, please call me who and who. Bring me who and who. So I went to bring uh, some of his friends. And, Oh, good morning, sir. Oh, you are here. Well, oh, actually, our father wants to see you. He's not feeling well. I think before his before passing away, he wants to see you, sir. Oh, really? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll come in. He, he dressed up and he, he began to wear his dress and he came to our house. And many of his friends, they came over to our house and they saw my father lying on the floor. Then my father said, Hey, you know, we're, I'm so happy that you were my friends and we had fun with, I had fun with you guys. As I was with you, I had fun in my life. But I'm I'm passing away now. I'm gonna die soon. You know, now I believe in God, uh, whom Unsuk Unsuk's father believed, my second son. I'm gonna go to heaven, and I'll go to heaven before you guys, and I'll prepare good places for you. So you, when you. 
So I want you to also believe God, whom my second son, u n s u k s father, believe, so that we could see again in heaven and we can live a good and happy life again up there. So to each and every one of his friends, he recommended them to believe in Jesus. And our, fa- our nephews and cousins came before my father's death was near. And one by one, he said to our ne- his nephews and cousins that, Oh, you don't know, you know your fa- when your fathers were young, this so-and-so thing happened. So he would explain all these things to, their, to their, their, his nephews and niece. You know, your mother had those kind of problems, you know. But you know, when it came, but but in your generation, I don't know what kind of problems you may you may be going through. But you know, when you go through th- those difficulties, there's nothing better than believing in Jesus. I think sooner or later I will I will die and I will leave this world. If I had not believed this Jesus, if I faced death all alone, I would be afraid and I would be scared. You know. And because I believe in Jesus and I I am saved, I am so peaceful and I have this joy in me. So you guys too, I want you to believe in Jesus. So like this, he would, he recommended them to believe in Jesus. After recommending them, maybe 8 p.m. in the evening, my father began to snore and sl- he fell asleep. And following morning, oh, while he was asleep, he... His heart stopped beating. And his death, actually, like right the moment when I was about to receive, when my father, uh, before his receiving salvation, he vomited blood and we wiped out all the blood and I told my father, Father, if you die, When we, when we miss you, we may want to hear your voice, Father. So I brought this recorder here. So you, if you have anything to tell us, you can tell me now. And I'll record it. I'll record it. And later, maybe on the day of your funeral or when we get together to, you know, When, we, when you come together in memory of your death, maybe we'll hear your voice again through this recording. And he began to talk, and he talked about things that we didn't know before. And at the end, when he, at the end he said, if I die, you're going to bury me, uh, you know, you're going to bury me in the mountain behind our house, you know, where your mom is buried. Bur- uh, bury me next to your mom. That'll be nice then. And then he said, and the one who's going to change my clothes is Mr. Kim who is living in Sodang village. You know, I took care of him from his childhood and I helped him many times. So he wouldn't find me dirty to change my clothes. So he wouldn't frown his face when he come to change my clothes. And he gave his will like that. I said that many times actually whenever I think about that it really makes me I feel really grateful and thankful I told him Father when you pass away as you said well, exactly as you told us to do so we are going to serve for your body like that but where would you go with your soul And I asked him in a very quiet and quiet voice. Then my father sent out a deep sigh. Then he said, I want to go to heaven. But, but, this is too late, I think. I have, I have not done anything good enough to be in heaven. When I heard that, I was very thankful because 
You know, we are not going to heaven because of our good deeds, but we are going to heaven because of because of what Jesus did for us. And secondly, I know that path very well, so I could explain it to my father. The year my father passed away, that year, although we went through difficulties. And pains, but my wish was to, uh, well, my wish was uh, for my, well, my wish was to my, see my father receiving salvation. So I preached the gospel to him. Before his death, actually, before seeing my father dying, I preached the gospel to many people, and it's true, many people received salvation. But I felt as if that was only a rehearsal before I preaching the gospel to my father. Because I preached the gospel to many people already before seeing my father, so to my father as well, I could explain it in details because I've done it before. I think for one, two hours, for about two hours of time, he was lying on the floor. I take breaks and one by one I exp I explained it. At the end, when I finished. My father was looking at the sky, and then he said, Jesus, God, thank you. For a sinner like me, you were, you were crucified on the cross, and you died on the cross, and your, your grace for which you died on the cross for me, I'm so thankful. At that moment, I was I was overwhelmed because on, before then, when I whenever I asked my father to believe in Jesus, he would he would say maybe next spring, and I asked him why why is it next spring? He said, you know, next year my friend is gonna celebrate his 60th birthday. You know, I can't miss that. I have to drink I have to drink take a drink with him. We'll, we'll have a very joyful day, and I'll quit drinking then. Then I will believe in Jesus. Okay. And when the next spring comes, he'll say next fall. Why is it why is it in the fall again? Then he he says, you know, my friend is have seeing, uh, seeing a daughter in law. So I a uh, daughter in law. So I cannot just let it by. I have to drink. I t have a drink with him. So I was very much scared because I was thinking that my father may die without receiving salvation. So I was always was afraid of that. But when my older brother went to Japan. Uh, my, I, I, I had, I brought him over my, over to my house, and during his stay in my house, that's when he passed away. So among people who live spiritual life, although they believe in Jesus, although they believe in Jesus, how can I go to heaven? What is a true belief? Because people they don't know it precisely; they just believe it simply. But when we believe in Jesus exactly, there is no one who, among those who does not sin. Everyone sins, so we are all sinners. But Bible is telling us how our sins are forgiven in many throughout the throughout many places in the Bible. And it is, it is important to have faith that our sins are forgiven by Jesus. Even knowing that my sins are forgiven on the cross, Satan deceived us and he tells us, and it is true that Jesus died for my sins, but because I sinned, I am a sinner. That's how people think. So although Jesus died for my sins, but I'm still a sinner, that's how people think. That's how most people think today. The Bible, the Bible does not say so. Especially Romans 4 verse 25, Jesus was given for our transgressions and He rise again for our justification. So because Jesus died on the cross to wash our sins on the cross, when He resurrected, our sins were all forgiven. If Jesus had not washed our sins away, then He would have died again for our sins. But He washed our sins once for all. 
And those who are born, those who are being born today, and those who will be born, so for all of them, He accomplished He accomplished eternal redemption. Eternal redemption. Because He accomplished eternal redemption, although He washed our sins, we still think, oh, we are sinners because we washed our sins. That's how people think. Because I sinned again, I'm still a sinner. But people say so because they don't know the Bible exactly. When Jesus died for our sins, He did not just uh, wash our sins partially. He washed our sins hundred out of hundred, thousand of, out of thousand. He washed it all. So we are made righteous. We can, whenever we die, we can go to heaven. So the people, they should simply accept it. But although Jesus died for their sins, still they think that they are sinners. So Jesus, He washed our sins away all. So you know, there, it was important for the Holy Spirit to come upon the heart of his uh, heart of the apostles. Because we, without having, without receiving freedom of sin, without receiving the Holy Spirit, without having sin in their heart, Jesus could not work in them. But Jesus, when he died on the cross, he resurrected after three days. But by Jesus' death on the cross, all our sins were forgiven. So now, now that they were cleansed, the Holy Spirit could come into their heart. Because the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit of God, and it is God. So He cannot dwell in the heart of the sinner. But when Jesus died and resurrected, it is true that our sins are all forgiven. But he washed and he came into our hearts. And when we come to believe, when we come to believe that our sins are forgiven, in the heart of Jesus, all our sins are forgiven. When, Je when Jesus sees us, He says that we are righteous. He doesn't remember our sins anymore. But if we still believe that we are sinners, then our heart and His heart cannot be one. So he washed our sins away, and He called us righteous. So when we look at ourselves, although we were sinners in our eyes, but because Jesus died on the cross and washed all our sins away, as we discover that, we come to have this heart that, oh, then myself too, I'm righteous like Jesus. So it's not that we are sinners, but it's but he's saying that we are made righteous. So there are many people who are were having discussions and debates on this subject, but Bible clearly stated that you know when we give offering for our sins, the sin is washed temporarily, momentarily. So each time we sin, we have to give an offering for that sin. So you have to keep giving an offering whenever we sin. That's why back in those days, back in old, back in the, old, the days of Old Testament, the blood flowed like a river. But since Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected after three days, because Jesus, he took his blood, he did not go into the temple which was in heaven. He put his blood on the altar which was in heavenly tabernacle. Because on the earth we belong to the realm of time. If we come to sin again, we become sinner again. But in the in the heaven, because we belong to the, the, the realm of eternity, everything is eternal in heaven. So we cannot go to heaven with this body because this body will rot and die because this body is tempor temporal, it's not eternal. So we wear, wear this new eternal body which does not wear out, which does not grow old. So we wear this new body to when you go to heaven. That's that's the kind of body that Jesus was wearing then. So, so it's been it's been more than thousands of years now. But so he's still alive. He listens to our prayer and answers our prayer. So just like that, when God washed our sins away, he did not wash our sins temporarily, but he washed it eternally. So we are made eternally righteous. If you see Hebrews nine verse eleven. 
There it says Christ being come Christ being high priest of good things to come. There are two tabernacles. There was a tabernacle already in heaven, but when Moses in the, when he when he went up to Mount Sinai, God showed Moses the mount the tabernacle through a vision. This is the this is the water pot, this is the the stand of this is the incense, and this is the showbread, this is lampstand. So God showed him all. After showing him all that, he told Moses, "Okay, now you go down to Mo go down from the mountain, and you make what I you make exactly what I showed you." That's how they came to build the second tabernacle. So the real one is was in heaven. The second one was built on the earth, as an example of what what was in heaven. So that was called tab tabernacle. Because the temple was built in the form of tent, because back then Israelite they were living in the wilderness, they had to keep moving around. So they made, they built a tabernacle in the in the form in the form of tent. And in the days of Solomon, they built a permanent building for the temple. So there there have there are two temples actually, because most people they don't know it precisely. You know, many people they call chapel as a temple, but that's not that's not temple. You know, they may re they may refer to maybe holy place, but that's not the temple because in the Bible, there was only one temple on the earth. That was the temple of Jerusalem. There was only one and only one on the earth. So on the day of the on the day of the Sabbath, the Israelites, the place where the Jewish Jewish Jew, Jew, uh, Jews gathered, the, the place is called the synagogue. So only the place where God dwells, that's the, that's the place that's called temple. There's only one on the earth. But in the Old Testament, when people are giving sin offering for their sins, God, uh, the, the priest, they would go into the earthly tabernacle, they would give offering. Because the ta tabernacle which was on the earth, it was built, uh, it was built after the image of the heavenly tabernacle. And whatever is on the earth belongs to time limit. Because in the time we have past, present, and future. So even if I, even if my sin is washed through the blood of Jesus, while we are in the realm of time, we become sinner again, and what Jesus has done for us would become would go to past, and we would, you know, we would give another offering for the sin. So you have to keep giving offering. For example, in, after maybe about three years later, if I come to sin again, then I would become a sinner. Then we have to give another offering for that sin because the, the, the offering that I gave three years ago, now it's in the past. You cannot watch the sin that I committed today. So that's why in the Old Testament, whenever they sin, they had to give a sin offering. But Jesus, knowing that, he did not put his blood on the on the altar of the earthly tabernacle, but he went into the heavenly tabernacle. And he went into the heavenly tabernacle, and he went into the he went into the mercy he went into the most holy place and put his blood on the mercy seat. So there he came to wash our sins eternally. So when you see Book of Hebrews in chapter nine, in Hebrews chapter nine. Verse 11, it says, But Christ being come on high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. So this tabernacle that where he went in was not made with hands because the heavenly tabernacle was not made with hands of men, but it was built bit by God. So Moses saw the tabernacle through a vision. He built the same thing on the ground and that's a simple image of what he saw in the heaven. So a holy up in Pasalil, he they built a, they built this image of the temple that Moses saw in the heaven. So Pasalil and all the they built this image of the temple that Moses saw through the vision. Now when you come to verse twelve it says not about the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So the cross of Jesus, if Jesus had put his blood on the altar, which is in, in, the, in, the, in the tabernacle, 
There are billions of people living on this earth. Even if Jesus dies billions of times, you will not be able to wash all our sins away. But that's why Jesus went into the ta heavenly tabernacle. He did not take the blood of goat or calves, but he took his own blood and accomplished, obtained eternal redemption. That is why the blood of the cross is eternal. Because we went into the heavenly tabernacle and put his blood on the altar of heavenly tabernacle, this is this made eternal redemption. Not only the sin that we commit today, but even the sins that we we'll commit in our old days, Jesus washed it all, so he cleansed us and justified us. Because although he washed our sins away, because we've seen again, people still think that they are sinners. So, that is, so people there are saying that Jesus died for us but did not wash our sins that we are, gonna, we are committing in the future. That's why they still believe that they are sinners. But Jesus, He accomplished eternal redemption. So for that, He put His blood on the heavenly tabernacle. Because if He dies, if He put His blood on the earth or altar which is on the earth, then even if He dies thousands of times, He will not be able to wash our sins away perfectly. That's why He took His own blood and He went into the, the, the heavenly tabernacle and He accomplished eternal redemption. That is why in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 12, Hebrews 9 verse 11, uh, verse 12, he says, not with the blood of goats or calves, but with his own blood, having obtained eternal redemption. And also, Hebrews chapter 10, Hebrews 10 verse 10, it also says that, it also says, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. So in the Old Testament, the priest giving offering in the tabernacle because they were working in the earth in the earthly tabernacle, it could wash our sins, but if we come to sin again, we have to give the offering again and again and over and over again. That's that is why in the earthly tabernacle the blood flew like a river, the Bible says. But in the heavenly tabernacle, there he washed our sins eternally. So he accomplished eternal redemption. That's why he called it once for all. Let's, let's see verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And next, verse 13. For man's fourth expects until his en enemies be made his footstool. Verse 14. Let's read verse 14 all together. For by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. He washed our sins eternally, eternally. So, Jesus does not, if Jesus dies every time we commit sin, even if he dies billions, billions, of, billions of times, he will not be able to wash our sins away. That's why he had to wash our sins eternally. So, after Jesus' resurrection, because people, they had this faith in them that their sins are washed, Apostles in, of the apostles of the book of Acts, they could boldly preach the gospel, and they have become this precious one. We we'll read again Acts chapter one verse one. It says the for, the former uh, treatise ha have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up after he after that he threw. He through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by made inf infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things uh, pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, not but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, and not many, not many days hence. Jesus was Jesus resurrected after three days of his death. Jesus was actually originally God, because he's God. He had this power, so he healed uh, sick people, and he, later on he was lifted up. But when Jesus was lifted up to heaven, he was not simply lifted up. When Elijah was lifted up, 
the, the Holy Ghost now went into Elisha. And Elisha did a lot more things than the prophet Elijah. Just like that, Jesus went up before uh, us, just like Elijah did. But just like he, Elijah did to Elisha, he gave us all the strength and power to do the same thing. He died on the cross, washed all our sins away. He prepared all these conditions to work, to be able to work in us. So when Jesus died, resurrected from his death, already our sins were forgiven. But in reality, we are no longer sinners. But our sins are all washed whiter than snow and we are cleansed, the Bible says. That is why the Holy Ghost which works in Jesus works like in us. So when you believe in Him, it will work, it will work the same in us as well. Although our heart is sinful and dirty, but because Jesus is holy and perfect and clean, when you accept the heart of Jesus, our heart become one with Jesus. The, the, spirit which, the Spirit which was in God will now come into our heart, and just like it worked through Jesus, it will work the same in our heart, and we will be perfect as Jesus, we will be righteous as Jesus, we will be glorious as Jesus. So although Jesus died on the cross and washed our sins, when I preached the gospel, I could see many people rising to receive salvation and I could see God working also in my life. I saw many people experiencing that in their, in their lives. That is why the apostles, when Jesus died and resurrected, on the day of the Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came upon people. And this Holy Ghost is the same spirit that was in Jesus. So just as it led Jesus, it, when He comes into our heart, He leads our heart and let us live just like Jesus lived, glorifying God and giving us strength to live for the gospel. So He prepared all the conditions for us. So although I'm, I'm a nothing, I'm a good for nothing person, especially for year 2020, I received a lot of grace of God. Starting from the month of May, we started this Bible conference and through many broadcasting stations, they televised and aired our sermons and more than 2 billion people, they heard our sermons. And since then, as we do CLF and many other programs, many broadcasting stations freely they televised our sermons. And many people, they came to receive uh, forgiveness of sin. When I see that happening, I was so thankful and grateful. In fact, when Jesus died on the cross and washed our sins, He not only washed our sins, He washed the sins of the world. But still many people, because they don't, they don't believe that truth, they still call themselves sinners, but that's not true. Although we were once sinners, but through the death of Jesus on the cross, because He died for us, died in our place, we are surely made righteous and clean. When you accept that in our heart, oh yeah, I'm made righteous, my sins are washed, I'm clean. When you believe that, from your heart you will be cleansed, and that clean heart will become one with Jesus. And the work of God, which was revealed through Jesus, will be also revealed through you. And that is amazing. Time to time, as I preach the gospel, I'm surprised. I say that many times. You know, I, I shared the story where the president of Ghana, President Jonathan Mills, received salvation. You know, at the time when I got down from the plane, when I arrived Ghana, the plane landed in Ghana at around noon. 12.30, so went through the immigration procedures and we, from our from the airport to the campsite, it took us a while, so it took us a long time. So I could barely change my cloth. So I wore just anything and I came to the campsite. That day, the first lady of Ghana she had participated in the, in the camp and, I, and she, gave, she delivered her congratulatory message. Although usually when the first ladies come, although they don't come often, but when they come, maybe they just stay for our camps, maybe just for 20, 30 minutes. After delivering the message, maybe they will leave from the campsite after 20, 30 minutes. 
But that first lady, when she came, she delivered her message, and then she sat next to me. And we have musical programs, we have many other programs, and it was my turn to deliver message. So I preached the word for one and a half hours, but she heard that all, and our program ended that day. Then the first lady, I thought she was going to go home immediately because she had to change and, you know, she had to do other things. But then she waited for me and she said to me, Pastor, I've got something to tell you. I asked her, Your Excellency, what do you want to tell me? She said, Oh, my, uh, the, president, the president is not feeling well. He's in a bad, situa he's a, in a va bad situation. Could you please come and pray for him? Uh, sure, I can pray for him. You, know, you can see the picture there, right? She's the first lady. She was very humble and she was very wise. So I talked to the first lady. Okay, then following morning, tomorrow morning, I'll send you, I'll send you a car, she said. The following morning, uh, she came with three sedans. Uh, each one had drivers in it. And she, they were escorted by policemen. So, from our side, myself and the translator and Pastor Cho, who was missionary there in Ghana, we got one on one car, on, on the other car, so our, our soprano Choi Emi and Park Jin Young, and the first lady, they got on the, the second car, and the third car, the bodyguards, they were, they were on, the th on, the, on the third car. And now we came to the presidential palace, and the president was waiting for us. And they, they, sat, he, they sat down on his chair, but he was not feeling worse. He was leaning against his chair. So, so to begin, our soprano chairman, Park jin they sang the Ganyan songs, two pieces, two pieces, and he, he, the president sang along with them. After singing two Ganyan songs, now the president began to speak to me, Pastor. You know, you know, because I was sick, I've been, I've been, I've been treated for for many <coughs> for many years now. But no matter how well my physicians treat me, I'm not getting any better. I'm not getting better, but it's getting worse. And this morning, when I woke up, as I was coming out of bed, I felt so I felt so ill and not well. So I thought to myself if I would be able to leave for five more days. And that was actually true. But pastor have a problem. You know, from my childhood, I went to church. And even after becoming a president, I tried not to miss the Sunday worship. You know, I'm recognized as one of the most faithful presidents in Ghana. However, Pastor, me too, because I'm a human being, I committed sin. So I'm a sinner. And if I die, I know that no sinner can go to heaven. So this me really makes me suffer, you know. President Jonah Tamils, him, that they received forgiveness of sin. I preached the gospel to many people in Ghana, and I talked about President Jonah Tamils whenever I preached them. And what President Jonah Tamils talked to me, many people, when they heard his story, they received salvation. The following year, the same year of the time, same time of the year, I went, I came to Ghana. So it was one year after president's death and many journalists that came to interview me and I asked and I had asked the president Mr. President how did you come to know that you were a sinner I asked the president and president told me pastor I commit sins am I not a sinner so he, replied, he answered me back I told him, no, it's not so. Then he was, the president was very surprised. 
Mr. President, it's not only in Ghana, but in every country, wherever you go, wherever you go, there's no country where the ju sinner judges his own sin. There's no country what the, where, there's a, they, where they do that. It's not up to the sinner to judge his own sin, but it is God who judges the sinner. In Ghana, is there any criminal who says, Oh, I've committed such and such sins, I'm going to prison for one month. No one does that, but it is the judge who judges the sinner. Just like that, when we sin, it is, it is God who judges our sin. But Mr. President, have you ever seen the judgment statement of God? Have you ever seen that before? Did you just say judgment statement? Yes, that's what I said. I have not seen it before. Where is it? You want to see it? Yes, I want to. It's in the Bible, I told him. So I opened the Bible to Romans 3, verse 23 and 24. Romans 3, verse 23 and 24. In Romans 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everyone sins and became short of the glory of God. Verse 24, verse 23, there is us who sinned, but there is no Jesus. So we remain sinner. So we came short of the glory of God. But when you come to verse 24, it is true, we sinned. We, we sinned in verse 23, so we are sinners. But when Jesus was not around, they remained sinners. But in verse 24, because here Jesus works, what? Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. Through, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So Jesus redeemed us from our sins. He redeemed us. That's what the Bible says, redeemed us. So we were supposed to die for our sins, but because He washed all our sins away, through His grace, we are all made righteous, freely, being justified. Yes, God is saying that we are justified. So what matters here? What do you mean by believing in God? It means believing in the Word of God, right? If God says we are righteous, then we are righteous. If God says we are holy, then we are holy, as He says. So I said to the president, President, Mr. President, how did you come to know that you are a sinner? You know, I sin, so am I not a sinner? He told me. But I told him, no, it's not, it's not so. He was surprised to hear that. What does that mean? We're not sinner because we simply commit sin. You know, in, there's no law in this world where we judge we, our own sin. We can't do that. And although you are a president, even the president cannot judge his own sin. But God says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See if the judge... God who is judge, if he says we are justified, then we are justified. The president was surprised. So I read many other, some other passages in the Bible. Then he said, Oh God, I thank you. Now I can go to heaven. Now my sins are washed. So he was so happy. So a little while later, the president said to me, I'm washed. I'm sanctified. I'm justified. He told me that. Then the president said, oh, I'm, 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 I feel so tired. I want to take a rest. It took, he spent a long time with me, so he went in with or the first lady and the physician, his physician, 
And the first lady gave us a ride back to our campsite. We we're very thankful. And about four hours later, the president, uh, the first lady called us and told us that uh, His, His Excellency the President, he received freedom of sin, and now, in order to take the eternal peace, just a little while ago, he was called by the calling of Jesus. So she said that in a quiet voice. And since then, I all get, we organized a conference in Ghana many times. And each time we, hold, we held conference, I talked about the president of Ghana, President Jonathan Mills. When he died, he thought he was a sinner before his death because he didn't know the Bible precisely. Because the Bible tells us exactly that our sins are all forgiven by the death of Jesus. In Romans 4, verse 25, he, died, he, was given, even, he was given for our transgressions. He will rise again for our justification, the Bible says. Loving brothers and sisters, now, in the book of Acts, you know, how did the Holy Spirit work in the heart of many, in the life of many people in the book of Acts? When the apostles accepted the word of Jesus into their heart, that's when the word could work in them. Just like that, although we are filthy sinners, but what do you accept? Yes, through the death that Jesus died on the cross, all our sins are forgiven, the Bible says. That's what Romans 3, verse 23 and 24 is telling us. But what is, really, what is really unfortunate is that there are many people who know us, verse 23 of Romans 3, verse, there, are, there are barely nobody, there are not many people who know us, verse 24. Verse 24, which says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yes, we are justified freely. So, our sins are already washed. So, we have to simply believe it. That's the, that's, the, that's the upright and that's correct spiritual life. As I do my ministry, what I witness to people is that we were once sinners, but because Jesus paid the wages of our sins, we are no longer sinners. Our sins are washed, we are made all. That's where the book of Acts begins. That's how it was with P Apostle Paul. That's how it was with Peter. That's how it was with Andrew. For all disciples on the day of the Pentecost, when they believed that their sins are washed through the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit came into their heart on the day of the Pentecost. 3,000 people received salvation, and afterwards, 5,000 people received salvation. We were able to see this great work done by God. So now, in order to go into the book of Acts, what do we do? We have to have the same heart as Jesus, that's all. It is true that I sinned, but on the day that He died on the cross, our sins were all washed. There's no more condemnation for us. There's no one who can slander us because our sins are all forgiven. We should simply believe it and accept it in our heart by faith. Tonight, we're talking about the book of Acts. And because we're just having, I'm just uh, working on the instruction, introduction, that's why I'm talking about this. But if we go further down, our heart is not like before. We have joy and we want to talk about it. We want to preach this word. When you see the Holy Spirit working in our lives, we're so thankful. And when you preach that heart, that's when we can become thankful and happy and grateful. So, so every day, because of coronavirus, because we cannot have this uh, online, offline worship, so through the book of Acts, I want you to gain strength in your heart. I want, we want this book of Acts to dwell in your heart so that we are no longer sinners, but because Jesus died on the cross and washed all our sins away, and that's what the Bible says. Before believing Jesus, I didn't know it precisely. I, I thought I was sinner, so I used to ask for forgiveness of sin. But now, 
I have this heart of gratitude that you washed my sins away. Loving brothers and sisters, today I just started with the introduction of chapter 1, but as we, as we go deeper into the book of Acts, we want to talk in depth, and as we study the book of Acts, I hope that your heart will be filled up with the book of Acts. And next time, I want you to read more, I, for next time, I want you to read more so that we could talk about it more. So in the book of Acts, Jesus' work in the book of Acts will work the same in your life. I hope you receive that grace and experience that grace. Thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you next time. Take care.